be a shower, like I said, I don't know what I mean, Mount. We teach you, the two of us are like, we'll go fuck away everywhere for this house. It's not as much. What would you like your wedding to be? When you have a wedding? Monaco. 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 Wow. Just wow. Shippers, your food is ready. <laughs> Those of you that were snoozing last night, it will interest you to know that last night was a complete game of love and war in the entire Biggie's mansion. I'm talking about both levels of the house. See, <laughs> ships have started brewing. Mm -hmm. Relationships. In fact, some people are even talking about marriage and I'm like, ah, hey, I mean, for the level two housemates, it's officially day two. Whilst for the level one housemates, it's officially day one and a few hours. However, the conversation about marriage, wedding, <laughs> is coming from the level one house. I, I'm wondering like, hey, these people, you people are not even taking it easy at all. People are really working hard for this 100 million Naira cash prize and I am here for all of it. I'm here for all of it. And guys, it was so interesting that from the level two household, we were getting different dosages of violence. Violence, violence. I've dropped a video already about the Amaka and Phoenix fight. If you missed out on that, just go ahead and check that video out. But from the level one household, we were getting <laughs> lovers' vibes, lovers' vibes. I mean, the ships have already started to sail. Guys, this is this is this is interesting. I think even if the ships are still at the Shakara level, the 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 plain hard to get level, the stop it I like it level, the uh, mm, 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 I don't want to go there, but I will go there kind of level, guys. It's very obvious that the ships are set to sail, not just in one house but in both houses. There's something currently brewing between Bella and Shegs, um, Groovy and um, Beauty. There's also Brian and Ilebaye, guys. There's a lot, there's a lot that's happening and I cannot wait to spill the tea, the entire tea of everything that I have mentioned on this particular video. So please just watch to the end, do not skip one bit. But before I continue, let me officially welcome all of you back to my YouTube channel. You are welcome back. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Gloria. I am the girl with the tea and the tea of this video is all that I have just mentioned, all right? So if you are new on this space, if this is your first time clicking on my video, Thank you so much for doing exactly that but please do not leave without joining the family simply do exactly what you see on your screen it's quite easy it's free so that whenever i upload a new video you will not miss one bit if you are interested in reality tv shows movies and trying social issues this is where you should be all right this is where we give the most detailed factual accurate analysis of those areas i have mentioned now, all of that said, let's quickly get into the juicy tea. Now, first things first, let's start with the ships brewing from the level one mansion. That's the black and white house. Um, it's a fact that from the very first night that the housemates were introduced into Biggie's mansion, Shags has been kind of subtly sending signals to Bella that he likes her, that's um, attracted to her, that he cares about her. Now, guys, for now, we do not know if this is genuine or if this dude came to play Kid Wire script. But guys, in my frank opinion, it's beginning to look that way. It's beginning to look that way because Shags and Kid Wire, they have so many things in common. You know, the UK boys, the boys from the wealthy home, the boys that did not come to the show to win the money, but to catch vibes, to make new friends, to connect. I mean, guys, if you listen back, to um Shag's intro. Are you here for the ladies or for the money? Why are you here? I'm here for all the vibes. I'm here for all the vibes. I'm here for the ladies. You will see that it sounds very, very similar to Kids Wire's mission in the lockdown mansion during his whole season. So why am I saying this? This guy has been making moves um at Bella. And Bella, who has this bitch-resting face, I don't give a damn, I don't care for anybody, I don't like you, and I'm going to tell you to your face that I don't like you kind of attitude, she has been playing hard to get. She has been accepting his um, gestures of kindness, his gestures of care. I mean, from the very first night, that Sunday night, um, the house was really cold. Shags had um, been very, very hasty to 
cover her with a duvet, yeah? And she's been accepting all of those gestures, but she's been playing how to get likes. Stop it, I like it, but don't stop. You know, that kind of thing. So, last night, the level one housemates, they were pretty much in a very, very good mood, in a very, very triumphant mood, as a matter of fact, because um, they had won the head of house challenge. Guys, if you all recall Biggie's new twist, um, once one housemate from any level wins the head of house challenge, the entire house is immune from nomination for that week. So it was natural that they will all be in a good mood. So they were having conversations here and there, and it was late. They were about to go to bed. Bella had already gone to her bed. So Shags had gone to her and was, once again, making known his intentions, or should I say his affections towards her. And he was talking about, oh, he doesn't want to be like the Ozo of the lockdown season. You know, he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want their situation basically to be like the Ozo and Nengi type of situation. And guys, yet again, it's very obvious that most of these housemates, they've watched Big Brother Ninja season by season. So they all know all the existing strategies. But one thing I must give to them though, is that I'm yet to see any of them trying really hard to replicate a past housemate strategy. Yeah, I must give it to them. Now, continuing with um, Sheg's approach to Bella. He talks to her, talks to her, in pigeon in wine and wine and wine and Evo invited her to follow him to his own room so that they could continue their conversation. And after playing small Shakara had to get, Bella Sha stood up from the bed and followed him to the amazement and amusement of Chi Chi and one or two other housemates that were also in that room and the other housemates were having a good laugh. Now Chi Chi on the other hand was quite excited because she's on a mission to ship everybody in that house. She's on a mission to pair all the housemates except herself. Going back to Shags and Bella, I was quite surprised when both of them were having conversations in the lounge area and Shex was already asking, oh, what's your type of man? Oh, what's your dream wedding? What's your wedding, dream wedding destination? And they were already talking about weddings. And they were also talking about, oh, how many kids do you want to have? Oh, do you have a child? I'm like, ah! Yeah, like, what would you like your wedding to be? Yeah, like, when you have a wedding? Well, when I go to the wedding, I want to have a wedding. I would like to have a child in Nigeria. You people have jumped the, the, the toasting level all the way to the courtship level. I mean, guys that's really deep anyways their conversation carried on for a while and it was very obvious that both of them were enjoying each other's company and um even shags acknowledged that he knew quite all right that um bella with her bitch resting face comes across as a kind of girl that even outside the house it would be very difficult for him to approach her and she was making it plain to him that listen i like money if a man does not really have money to fit my lifestyle to give me the soft life that i deserve I would not want to be with that man. Now, whilst that conversation was going on, Hermes was having conversations with, um, what's her name now, Diana and Gilly Fire. So he was letting them know about the sexual tension that exists between him and Chi Chi. Now, according to him, both of them are fully aware of the sexual tension between both of them. He likes her, obviously. She likes him as well. And for him, it's just that he does not want Wahala, but he's not going to persuade her as well. But if she gives him the green light, ah, both of them will literally be knocking in every nook and cranny in that house. Like he was, he was crazy about her ass. Like for him, that bonbon bon is big and juicy. So if she venture gives him the green light, for him, oh, he's not going to apply pressure. He's not going to, you know, make moves or anything. But if it happens, then he's going to give her a show. Like he will make sure that she's satisfied. But for now, ah, he's okay with his polyamorous relationship because he has gone through a lot with his women and he does not want to tamper with anything that they have successfully built over time. Regardless of the fact that Hermes was kind of confessing his attraction to TM Chi Chi, he also admitted that he likes Alison. And he's not the only person that likes Alison. I think there's also Dotsu in the picture that likes Alison. So they were also talking about bro code. He's not going to put pressure on any of the ladies, but if any of them encourages anything to happen, he's not going to hesitate. He would definitely jump on it. I said, guy, okay. now this kind of thing that would be fine. 
We are looking for this kind of drama. So bring it, bring it. Guys, whilst Hermes was explaining all of these things to Diana and Didi Fire, in my mind, I was just praying that God, this is the kind of triangle that I am looking for. Make it happen. And the reason I'm praying for that kind of triangle is because with the kind of personality that Hermes has, guys, I know for a fact that there is no way that Hermes would like a girl in that house and he will back down for another guy to have that girl. Now lie. Guys, I want to see that kind of fire fire triangle. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see violence. And so shall it be. I want it to happen. Moving up to the level two house, yes. Brian had switched birds from um, Daniela's bed to Ilebaye's bed. Now, if you all recall, I think it was the first night, yes, or the, the second night, yes, that was a Sunday night, Brian had actually cuddled up with Daniela. If you, you all know that Daniela is Brian's sort of bestie in the house, but then they have this mutual understanding, like some kind of sibling kind of love going on. But Brian is also obviously attracted to Ilebaye. He told her right from the very first day they all got into the house and were introducing themselves to one another. He said to her that, listen, I like your jacket. I like your hair. I like the tattoo on your chest. I like you. I like everything about you. I like your eye. I like your ear. Like he told her obviously that he likes her. And from time to time, Whenever there was the opportunity for all of them to gather in the lounge to play games, you will obviously see Brian shifting bomb bomb to go and, you know, attachy to Ilebae. So I'm just thinking that, hmm, this is going to be another interesting triangle that's going to be brewing right there because there is also Kes, our married man, who obviously is strongly attracted to Ilebae's aura. He had told us several times that he likes her. And when as well, there's any opportunity we see Kes gumming body with Ilebae even dancing with her today when Biggie had allowed them to go into the garden so guys I cannot wait to see another kind of triangle brewing in that house because once again Brian does not look like the kind of young man that's going to back down from a challenge he does not look like the kind of person that's going to back down when he likes a girl and this time around I have a strong feeling that he legit wants to have a ship with Ilebae so guys they were cuddling in bed and even after he left the bed to go and settle fights between Amaka and then Fina, he went back to the bed and held her tight and cuddled properly. And finally, finally, the romance of the night that in my frank opinion, I have a very, very strong feeling that if this ship happens between these two housemates, it's going to be a very, very powerful one. It's going to be a force to reckon with. And the reason I say so is because um, beauty, because it involves um, groovy and beauty. Beauty on one hand is, a, is an alpha female. She's, she has a very, very strong personality. She's very, very assertive. Remember, she's a lawyer. She's very, very assertive, argumentative. She's very, very defensive as well. I mean, guys, she's just a very, very strong character. And groovy on the other hand seems like a chill kind of guy, but... He also knows how to stamp his authority and he's also a gamer. He's also a player. He came to play, came to win. Beauty as well came to win. So also earlier today or even I think not even earlier today. I mean the other day there was this um, issue that they had that um, Beauty picked offense because they were playing truth or there and um, she had been dared to kiss Groovy and Groovy had actually rejected her kiss saying that it was too early for both of them to get physical like that and Beauty had picked her first and so she had apologized to him Monday morning but then at night she and Groovy they were now cuddling in bed I'm trying to remember whose bed it is again because I'm not sure that bed actually belongs to Beauty but they were actually cuddling in bed and Groovy was opening up he was Confessing is attraction to beauty. Telling beauty that he likes her. Yeah. And he was saying that, oh, with every other person in the house, he could play the game, do whatever he wants to do. But with her, he doesn't know how to do that because he genuinely cares about her. And guys, I attest to that as a fact because that's uh, that's 100. Guys, I definitely attest to that as a fact because right from the very first night they got into the house, once Beauty had declared that she's like an alcoholic, that she loves drinking a lot, and she had gotten tipsy that first night, I saw how Groovy from time to time was checking up on her, checking up on the quantity of alcohol she was consuming. He did the same thing the next day. He had just literally had her back. And that is also aside the fact that both of them were the first housemates that got into Biggie's house. Yeah, I think Beauty was the first 
no groovy was the first and um beauty had met him in the house and both of them they had been i don't know should i say struck by each other's gorgeousness yes um so guys i don't know i'm just having butterflies in my tummy because ships and shippers is about to be breathed in this new season and they're not even waiting for a week to pass now they're starting immediately <laughs> so shippers as i said at the start of this video your food has been served come and chop make sure you chop a level because i'm going to be dragging all of you if i find out that any of these ships it's going to be fake and they're going to be acting like it's real. Yes, this is where I'm going to end this particular episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Just go ahead and let me know in the comment section which um, couple or impending couple you are rooting for. And are you going to be a sheep at this season, by the way? If you will be, let me know in the comment section below by, you know, lifting up a hand. And I don't know, just let me know if you like the idea of sheepers brewing on the second day of the show. And I will see you all on another episode or frankly speaking with Gloria Elijah, do have an amazing, amazing day. And remember, there's more juicy gist coming about the shenanigans that happened on the second night in Biggie's house. Bye.